Okay, guys, so with this one, I want to talk about how witchcraft can infiltrate the church, okay? This is very important. Uh, this is something that actually happens within America uh, a great bit. And the reason why I say that is because America is delayed on a lot of different things. Um, America is starting to be awoken, um, but... And I'm not saying that to have country against country and to vigor back and forth about Christianity, right? But it's a lot of things that takes place within America because of lack of revelation on many different things. Now, I'm not at all saying that all churches in America function in this way. But it's some churches that are in America that actually do function in a way of lack, if you will. Um, and the reason why is because the lack of the prophetic. What do I mean by this? Um, the prophetic, the prophets are the guard dogs of the church, right? What, well, prophet, you might say, prophet, why are you saying this? Why are you referring to prophets as being the guard dogs? Well, the form, the form, if you will, is the church, okay? The shepherd in which the shepherd watches out for the farm and look after the sheep and tend to the flock is the pastor. The guard dogs are the prophets and the prophetic voices. Okay, You need a good guard dog that's on standby at the church to look after the flock and to look after the shepherd from a spiritual standpoint. Think about it. The the uh, the flock might not be enabled to see the wolves, right? The Bible warns us of wolves in sheep clothing. You need a guard dog that can catch the scent of a wolf. A guard dog can see beyond what you can see. A guard dog can smell beyond what you can smell. And a guard dog can hear beyond what you can hear. And sometimes the shepherds might not be graced in this area to see, to hear, or to feel, or to sense the things of the spirit realm like a prophet can. A prophet can sense and smell the presence of witchcraft and sin and things of that nature. A, a, a shepherd that seasoned learn to discern better. You know, it takes time though sometimes. You know, I'm not saying that it's not no shepherds out there that don't function within the realms of the prophetic because it absolutely is but it's also some shepherds out there that don't function well in the prophetic and this is why God has the fivefold ministry we all can play our parts in the, in, in, in the edifying and the strengthening of the body of Christ okay so I'm going to say this guys whenever you got somebody that's coming to church that's coming from the lifestyle of witchcraft Okay, they're usually coming from a place of an origin of some type of spirit of control. When you think of Jezebel, Jezebel is a good character to refer to in the Bible, but we got to get to the source of Jezebel. Now, I get it, some people refer to this as the Jezebel spirit, but the true nature and the true spirit that's behind the Jezebel spirit. It's actually a spirit of witchcraft. It's an ancient spirit. This ancient spirit is known as the spirit of Baal. All right? Or some people will refer to him as Baal or Baal. I say Baal, depending on where you're from. Now, the spirit of Baal is an ancient spirit that's been here ever since the biblical days. It's a principality. Okay? Um, it was the driving force behind Jezebel in the Bible. So some people get it misconstrued, all right? Now, Jezebel had a very controlling nature. So the witchcraft spirit of Baal was behind the controlling nature of Jezebel. That's why when you see Jezebel within marriages, you see Jezebel within ministries, things of that nature, it's a very controlled, narcissistic spirit, okay? Indeed, I tell you this, behind every narcissist is a Jezebelic spirit of Baal spirit. That's the root canal of it. Now, the world would just say, oh, you know, scientifically, this is just a, a narcissistic person and there's no treatment for that. But I'm here to tell you, 
whatever the world says, when the world says that it's no treatment, actually is treatment, and it's through Jesus Christ. But unfortunately, the world don't acknowledge Jesus Christ, so that's the problem. But we'll get on that on, on a later day subject. So to stick on subject, when you have a person that comes to a church that used to dabble in witchcraft, I'm not at all telling you that this person can't be used by God, that this, this person can't be restored, because I know many great men and women that was in witchcraft but was restored. But what I am warning the church of America is be very, very careful and try a person by the fire of the Holy Spirit and have patience and self-control. Patience and self-control is what's going to allow you to see the true fruit of a person. Now, Jezebel, and I like to say this too, Jezebel and the spirit of Leviathan, which is pride, will actually run to the church, okay? Run to the church to attain a position of leadership. They will serve, they will sign up for every single notion <laughs> that they can sign up for on the church board to be seen and to, uh, it's basically like manipulation tactics, if you will. This is what narcissists do, okay? They will come bearing gifts. They will win over the man or woman of God that lack discernment, that's not really seasoned. And that's thing you know, oh, I think this person or that person is a perfect candidate for the leadership position over the intercessory prayer team or over the worship team or over this team and that team. Now you got a Jezebelic influence that's going to came in and inf infiltrated your church. Notice how the word of God says that it's wolves in sheep clothing, meaning that the devil is not going to show up saying, hey, I'm the devil. The devil is going to send his wolves to ascend on a church that lack prophetic, okay, that lack the eye of God, that lack the mind frame of God that lack the seers dimension. When you have seers, okay, I'm not at all saying that the prophets run the church and things of that nature. It's different capacities of that. Sometimes you have a prophet that's been called to plant a church and to shepherd a prophetic culture at that church. So you might have a head prophet. In other cases, you'll have a prophet that's assigned to a church to work with the pastor, not against the pastor, okay? To, uh, uh, to work under the leadership of the pastor. But the reason why the prophet is there is to protect, is to guard. So the prophet voice needs to be respected as well. Now I'm not at all saying uh, a person who hasn't been tried by the fire because prophets need to be tried too. Prophets need to be held accountable as well. The demonstration of fruit needs to be there. The character needs to be there. But a well trusted source is key. Um, is key to running the operation of the farm. You know, if you have a farm, you're not just going to have just any crazy dog there, a dog with a bad attitude and things of that na that nature. A dog with rabies would be very dangerous to you and your farm. You're going to have a dog that's well tried. Okay, so that goes for the prophet too. All right. Now I hope and pray that this brings. Um, some clarity to why it's so important to have a church with a prophetic nature. Really, you need a company of prophets in today's world because Satan do send out agents, okay, to corrupt. The first thing the agent wants to do is go against the prophetic voice or go against the prophet of the house to eliminate the eyesight in the ears of the church to spread malicious slander and lies and things of that nature to eliminate the real culture, the real prophetic culture of the church for for that person can sink their hooves in and be Jezebelic. You see, this is why the Bible speaks about it in Revelation when the Lord says, give this message to the angel of the church, which in this context means the pastor over that church. I, I forget the particular name of it. But the Lord was bringing correction because the church had tolerated Jezebel. So this is a real, this is a real thing. So I pray that this inspires you. If you guys have ever had this type of encounter, comment below and let me know. God bless you.